one of the things is agency. The fact that in games, you are in control of stuff. Right? You get to make choices, and that those choices matter in the game world. Uh, for teenagers, this is a big draw because they don't feel a lot of agency in their lives. Most of what they do is determined by other people. They're told by their parents, they're told by the schools, uh, even as, as adults, right? You, if you're standing working a standard job, you get told when to go to work, you get told what you do at work, you come home, you've got you look after your kids, you, you, you know, you're following a script. You don't feel like you have many choices in your life. But you make a game and suddenly you can be that uh, a, a rogue, you can be a knight, you can be evil, you can be good, you can um, you can be a, a griefer, you can you can do almost anything, and you have a lot of agency, a lot of choice, a lot of freedom <coughs> that you don't have in your normal life. And this is one of the things that is attractive about games is that you you have choice and you are meaningful in the world that you make meaningful choices, um, and so you have that agency that you are in control of things. Um, Games are far better at feedback than most of the rest of life. Right? Eating healthily has got a really slow return cycle. Right? You get feedback in like 50 or 60 years, we you live a bit longer because you weren't eating that junk food now, that yummy, yummy chocolate junk food now. But you know, in 40 years time, I don't want diabetes, but yummy junk food. <laughs> I mean, the reward cycle here is terrible in real life. Right? Um, even in education, we do a really bad job of, you know, you should be studying in August or in January, right? We should teach you and stuff, and tonight you should be studying for the exam because we know that that's what's best for you, right, in terms of learning stuff. But, you know, it the reward for doing well in the exam doesn't come until quite a bit later. And even doing well in the exam is only kind of partial reward. What you're doing it for is either a job or maybe you're wanting to go into research or you know the reward cycle between first year course and that study and the actual reward you get for getting the good degree and getting um, a good job parts years and years away that's really hard to maintain motivation between an action and getting the positive feedback for that action right um games i press a button and poof, stuff happens right everything i do I instantly get feedback, right? So I don't have to delay gratification. I don't have to work out how things are going to, like, I don't have to keep in mind all the time. I'm being good because I'll live longer. I'm being good because I'll live longer. I'm being good. That's hard to try and hold that reward. So you have to build other rewards. Um, you see people losing weight, right? They get very focused on not their health, but in their weight, because it's a number that gives them feedback immediately. Now, even if it's the wrong number to use, uh, it's still, they can see it giving feedback. Sometimes it gives negative feedback and they get really depressed, but it's that fast feedback that they need to do things. And games are good at that. Urgent optimism. Um, this is games. Games create this uh, uh, partly unpredictability is one of the words also associated with this. But often you experience a game that if you just spend a few more minutes, five minutes more, I, I will get there. I will do this. I, it just did no, no. I'll, I'll go and do that in a minute. I've just got to, I'm almost there. I've almost completed this, right? And then you complete that. And then there's another thing that you want to do. Just another five minutes. And then there's another thing and another five. And you get sucked into this constant kind of, I just a couple more minutes and I'll, I'll succeed or I'll get the thing done or I'll get as far as I want to get. So games are very good at drawing you in, keeping that feeling going. Um, experimentation. Uh, you get to play with things. You get to do different things, right? Um, you get to be different people. Right? You can you can role play another uh, another character. You get to try out things. Um, you get from feedback. You get reward for trying new things and experimenting in the game. Because right? failure is low cost, but reward gives you but, but success gives you rewards, right? So you can you can play with stuff. Um, and this experimentation versus exploitation is very critical when we look at innovation, right? Um, because exploitation is where you take what you know and you make as much money out of that as you can. Experimentation, you try stuff that might fail, right? And it's that balance between trying new things and exploiting what you already know that game's gonna sit on the experimental side of that. 
and social interactions. We games certainly more recently games have become far more focused on the social interactions. Right? And sort of the social networking games, that's all they were about was the social interactions. Um, and playing with friends, uh, we also know that there's we talk about um, uh, the zone of proximal development in educational theory, uh, which is what you can learn with the help of other people. Right? So there's a that learning has also got a group effect of that there are other people who know similar things to you that can be quite useful. Um, so all of these um, all relate to also player types. Now, um, the Bartle types were some of the, one of the standard um, models for uh, for player types uh, was Bartle's um, four types. So achievers, killers, socializers, um, and he did this in MMO theory. Right? So achievers are people who try and you know achieve all the badges and they, they try and achieve things. So status and rewards are very important. Killers just want to be better than you, right? And whatever they're doing, they don't really care about the overall achievement in the game. They're competitive. They are going. They are trying to beat the other person. That's what's important. Um, socializers just want to chat with people. So a lot of people who play bridge. Um, your parents who may have played card games or um, gone out and played board games, usually what they're doing is actually talking to other people. The game is just a reason to be there to talk, right? but they're socializing. The last time are the explorers who tend to just want to find out new stuff, and so they run off and they go and find things. And they'll explore a world and they'll explore how things work and they'll, yeah, they'll find out new things. Um, so, of course, Bartle's not the only one to come up with four types of stuff. Four seems to be quite a good number to come up with. And so these are a whole bunch of other kind of Bartles, killers, achievers, explorers, and socializers. Uh, Kelly has Elinx, Aegon, Nemesis, and Aaliyah, which are all different play types. There's four different play types there. Um, and other ones where you're talking about impacting, striving, thinking, and uh, relating. So the gallops kind of four types so lots of people are going to give different names to the kind of a four type theory um one of the reasons it's four types is you put because it's really easy to draw on a board where you say this is one kind of thing that's one kind of thing so there are people here 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 and here so how many types of people there are there are four types of people why because that was easy to draw right honestly that's quite a lot of the reason why there are four is these things um uh, he decided that that four, um, so Bartle's um, original four, he wasn't happy with. He wanted to have eight. Eight's harder to draw, right? And harder to see. Um, so here, he now puts people on the corners. And there's still um, the, there, there are still kind of different axes. So here he talks about Who's interested? Who are? Who's interested in the other people playing the, the, the game? And who's interested in the world itself? Who's interested in acting? And who's interested in interacting? Right. So you can kind of, if you and 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 the last one is, who is kind of interested in the explicit part?
in the game, you actually make something useful. Okay? So um, you can almost, like gold farming in World of, in, in, in WoW was, those people weren't really playing games, they were doing a job, right? But you could have a game actually making something productive. Um, Add the gaming, where you try and sell you stuff. Games as work, so that's that's more like the programmers who are, and they're not they're playing a game because they're being paid to entertain people. So they're not really, though their motivation is no longer about fun. It's about the spectators having fun. The spectators don't really care if the player themselves is having fun or not. Right? They more care that this. That, yeah, so the game and the rules are designed more about making it fun for the spectators rather than making it fun for the players. Um, so, the game for propaganda, uh, America's Army, was probably the most obvious one of these. But there's some very cynical games in the games for propaganda on religious propaganda. And I see, I saw a terrible one, which was um, a bulldozer. You were, you were um, the Israeli president driving a bulldozer back and forth and mowing down um, Palestinians and you're driving over Palestinians and that was the game to try and drive over as many Palestinians as possible with your with your bulldozer okay just nasty right no not not funny not interesting just nasty there's a bunch of those games that are made by people uh, because they have political agendas and they they yeah you know hate speech hate games there are <laughs> they, they exist um, games of training, where you try and train people to do specific things or be better at specific things by creating a simulation of that. And games for health and games for education. So games for health, um, we kind of break it down into various areas. So there's physical health, mental health, and social health. Um, not many people talk about social health as much as mental or physical health, right? So it's very obvious when someone's fat or when they're unfit, right? Physical health is usually pretty obvious. Mental health, you know, if they're a bit stupid, maybe, you might notice. Uh, if people get depression or they start going to Alzheimer's and become like, um, they start losing their memory, pretty obvious. When people have no social interactions, it's much harder to see because, you know, they've dropped out of society and that's why they're not having social interactions. So it's much harder to see people who have poor social health. But they exist. And um, so we can look at games that can reintegrate people back into society. PTSD might be an example of poor social health. Um, yep, we've got uh, only a few minutes before we have to leave. But we've got another session on Thursday where I'll finish this off and we'll set up the readings next week. Okay? Um, and we'll set up the Go Rad game because we're going to play a game of reading and discussion. Okay? So you guys are going to play a game while you read your, the articles and, answer, uh, and ask questions about them. We're turning that into a game. As a kind of you know self-referential, a serious game of the serious game course. Okay, um, so uh, cancer and depression games, um, but not to give you cancer or to cause depression. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> against those who. Uh, I'm part of the Games Health Network. Um, the Human Cognition Project is a cognitive game. Um, Lumino Lumosity. Any of you played Lumosity? Yeah. The idea is to try and make you kind of smarter. Um, it's fun. It's fun. There's very little evidence that it actually makes you smarter, but hey, you know, if you if you feel smarter, that's probably a win. Like the placebo effect, the fact that you feel smarter means you probably think you make better decisions, and you probably are making better decisions because you feel like you sh you are making better decisions. Right? So, so even just that side effect of being confident about the decision means you're more likely to be making a good one. Um, and education. Lots of education games. There are just, we keep making more of them, and you will see a lot more of these. Dragon Box is one of my favorites um, as a game for kids. Uh, it's a really nice way of visualizing new ways of doing education. You take away the kind of formal linear approach, and you give people more of a, you know, different ways of seeing problems, different ways of solving problems. So, so lots of work. The Gala Network is, the, is a, a gaming and learning alliance which was a European project. Um, too many partners made some shit games, but you know, there's money. They 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 were trying to do stuff. Stuff. One of the main problems you get 
with most of, of the serious games, almost all of them you'll find are terrible. Right? They're all designed by people who don't really understand any of, of these features I was talking about. They understand glories. They don't understand that lot, right? They don't understand um, agency, right? They make games where you have, you're not in charge of anything. They make games where they don't give you feedback. They make games where you, there is no optimism. You know what's going to happen. You know when it's going to happen. Eh. Um, they, you don't get to experiment, right? Because, you know, it's a health game. And so you're supposed to take <coughs> medicine at the same time every day. You're not supposed to experiment with your medicine. It doesn't make sense. And I, like, I, I was working with a group who wanted to make a game to teach um, uh, teenage mothers to be better with their kids. And so they wanted a baby that would wander around and, you know, get into stuff and, and, and you know, that you had to protect the baby. So we wanted to see, you know, the baby get speared by knives and, and have hot water poured on it and stuff. You've got to see the results. Otherwise, the experimentation, there's no experimentation. And no, they, they wouldn't accept that. So every time the baby did something slightly dangerous, it would fade to black and reset the game. And the teenage mothers who were, you know, they weren't averse to talking about pretty base discussions around sexuality and around violence and stuff. Because, you know, they've already dropped out of school and they're having babies when they're 16 or 15. Um, yeah, fading to black wasn't what they needed. Right? They needed to see the consequences of the actions in full view. Right? So, yeah. Um, working with experts can be from most serious games are terrible games. Um, some of them are quite good. So, um, I worked with PhD. VBS is a simulator. Simulators tend to simulate well, so you can make good games out of them. Even though the game might not be very good, the simulation can be very good. Um, we did a simulation on magnetism, where you teach people how magnets work. And that's, again, it's a simulation. So the simulation can be relatively good without the game having to necessarily be spectacular. Um, guys over in Harmer made a game on learning bird calls and learning different types of birds. So you had to feed them different foods and stuff. So, so yeah, um, you can do all sorts of educational games. Um, yeah, so um, learning how to, how, to, how to give medicines and how much medicine to give. And so there are a bunch of these kind of games to try and teach people. Um, we will talk about how we analyze them next time because it's 11 o'clock and there's someone else in the room at 11.15. Um, now, so we have another session on Thursday afternoon and I will complete this and we will have, um, and I'll send you out on the front of page, I'll give you the link to go and do the personality test. What I want you to do is I want you to go and do the personality tests, learn your learning style find out whether you're a visual or an audio or a um, kinesthetic um, learner. Yeah, and read, write. So um, what kind of learner are you? Four, again, again, it's four. Four is easy to draw. <laughs> so um, uh, four creates interesting oppositions. But no, uh, there, yeah, four is easy. Uh, but there, there are four learning styles. Um, we'll also look at, at asking, I'm going to try and ask you guys your tutorial style, your learning your game learning style, um, and this is a new one which I haven't tried before, which is: Are you explorers or modelers? Right, and there's uh, and there's again four categories here. There are explorer. There there are EEs. There are two explorers where you explore the interface and you explore how to play the game. Right, so you're exploring the mechanics and exploring the the game itself. There are and modelers prefer to see someone else do something before they do it or understand the consequences of something before they do it. Right? So when they learn the interface, they tend to wait until the game tells them, oh, you press space to jump. Right? They don't just randomly hit keys and see what they all do. They kind of, the game takes the the game says, oh, space is for jump. Oh, great, okay, so, so space is done because the game tells me that that's now what's gonna happen when I hit space. Right? Um, and that's on modeling on interface and there's also modelers in game who will tend to do the quests that the game tells them and achieve and do the, the try and achieve things the game tells them that they're that are part of the objectives of the game so we'll, we've got some tests to try and work out what kind of modeling exploring you do when you're playing games so we'll put those up on the front of page uh i want you to do those by next week uh i don't expect you to do readings by by next week i mean i expect you to do the test by thursday and we'll give out the readings for next Tuesday, right? So I expect, 
Uh, well, <coughs> I reckon we can get some readings done by, by Tuesday. So, okay, so um, so we'll see you guys on um, Thursday afternoon at one to one till three, right? And then we'll set up the, the reading game and we'll set up all those. Do you guys have any questions? Two to four. Thursday is two to four. Thursday two to four. Do you have any questions? Does that stuff, does that stuff make sense to you guys? Okay. Um, one of the things, so if you want to make a game as part of your project, then I want you to see to discussing some of these things. How are you giving your player agency? What choices? How, how did you work on balancing the choices? Um, what kind of feedback do you give them? Uh, what kind of social interactions are there? Right? Those are things to think about when you're thinking about making a game for someone is, or, or a game for a serious purpose. Is not just, you know, how big are the explosions, um, but more, you know, what kind of person am I de dealing for? What kind of experimentation do they have? What kind of feedback do they get for that? Okay, you guys good? Okay, so uh, now it's so um, yeah, it's one o'clock. They have Darren. Mm -hmm.